perfect. Thank you. Okay, cool. No, I'm sharing. Oh, my screen switched on me again. <laughs> we did a dry run a few seconds ago, so that's always the way. As long as you can get your screen up, you have capability to mm -hmm. show your presentation. Yeah, it's starting to come through now. And and now you just need yeah. to press F5. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, we're full screen, Michaela. We're good. Okay, so I'm going to uh, minimize my pictures here. So um, you see the screen? It says yeah, this, yeah, look, yeah, it was full Perfect. screen. Okay, excellent. So we'll get started without losing any time here. So uh, uh, good morning, anyone, uh, everyone. Uh, thanks, Dan, for the introduction. And uh, uh, as he noted, uh, we have a pretty short agenda today, um, but lots of things to talk about as always. So I'll be uh, mostly talking about the results of our 2021 Travel Intention Survey, which will give us an idea of um, how this season might be shaping up this year. And uh, I also want to briefly touch on the current consumer mindset. Uh, as knowing where consumers' headspace is right now provides an important context for how people feel about traveling, how they make travel-related decisions in terms of when, where uh, they want to travel, what activities and experience experiences they're they are looking for. So this is our main topic uh, for today. Um, just a quick housekeeping note. Uh, as we did last time, the, the slides you'll be looking at uh, today uh, will be made available to everyone. Uh, as soon as we finish this session, uh, I will uh, send them over to Stan and he can uh, distribute to all the participants. We'll also post them on, on our website. So there's no need for you guys to take any screenshots or to panic when the slides move quickly. Um, everything will be available, available uh, right after the, um, after the presentation. And we will also post a more uh, detailed uh, report uh, with the survey results. Uh, that will be on our website. All right. So that's it. Let's get started with the uh, consumer state of mind. Um, so I mentioned the reason I want to talk about this is because it gives us good context to understand the consumer, to understand uh, consumer behavior. Uh, as we know, the pandemic has had a, a very severe shocking impact on, on everyone, on everybody's life and uh, the way we do things, the way we feel, the way we uh, socialize, the way we, and the way we travel. And so as we have seen for most of the past year, uh, Canadians have been extremely realistic about uh, the severity of the COVID pandemic and they're certainly not taking it lightly. So, and considering the, the roller coaster of the various COVID waves we've been through and even the recent height of what has been called the, the third wave and considering the impact of the virus variants, uh, it doesn't certainly, so it's not surprising that uh, many Canadians still feel that we're still not through the worst of the crisis or that we're right in the, in the middle of it. And also, um, despite some of the things we see on the news, like uh, anti-mask protests, uh, rule-defying rodeos, um, ro rule-defying church services and things like that, um, it is reassuring that the majority of Canadians actually agree with the COVID related restrictions. So in the numbers on the on screen here speak for themselves. Um, and Canadians certainly uh, understand that this is the only way to curb transmission of the virus and uh, the only way with the vaccine to eventually beat it. Uh, and as we know, um, uh, the restrictions that have been put in place, unfortunately, also include wide ranging travel restrictions, which will still impact uh, domestic and in international travel for at least part of the season, uh, with hopes high that late in the summer or early fall, uh, uh, there will be more opportunity for travel as we progress uh, with our vaccination efforts. 
Um, and speaking of vaccines and vaccinations, um, there's certainly no doubt uh, that vaccines are playing a crucial role uh, in building back, especially uh, traveler confidence, because we have lost so much of it and um, um, it is vital to restart tourism. And fortunately, uh, many Canadians are willing to roll up their sleeves and get the shot. And uh, Canada is doing really well now in terms of getting the first doses into many arms as possible. And I think I saw this morning, Canada is at, uh, currently at about 46% or so of uh, first doses administered. So we're well on our way. And um, I'm getting my shot on Friday morning. So I'm all set for that as well and hope all of you agree that this is a, an important uh, thing to do to help us uh, restart the economy and restart uh, travel uh, in particular. So, but we also know there are still <clears throat> important questions that the vaccine science uh, needs to answer. So we don't know everything about the vaccines yet, how long they last and you know, um, how much protection there is. And so this is all still being figured out. Um, uh, but uh, this one of the topics we've been tracking over, oh over the last six months or so is that, uh, is the topic of uh, vaccine passports or digital vaccine uh, certificates. And there is belief that uh, um, this general, generally accepted that uh, um, vaccine passports uh, will especially help open things up for, for travel for vaccinated people. Um, but on the other hand, there's still a lot of confusion, a lot of uh, different approaches to how vaccine passports can be implemented and especially in terms of how they can be used. So there's lots of uh, activity going on uh, many countries are developing digital vaccine certificates. Uh, the EU in particular, they are planning to open uh, up to fully vaccinated tourists. Um, but there's still a lot of questions around um, how and for exactly what purposes uh, these passports can be used. Now I know like from the comments our prime minister has made, uh, Canada is not, not a big fan of using uh, vaccine passports within the country, for travel within the country, or you know, telling people what they can or cannot do based on um, uh, the vaccines they have received. So it's a little controversial, and some ethical questions potentially around it. Um, but in general, when we look at some of the research that you're seeing on the screen, uh, when it comes to private companies, uh, Canadians and other people in, around the world and other countries are generally very accepting of the idea that vaccine passports could be used to let vaccinated people do certain things, which is probably um, good news too for, from a travel perspective, uh, as travel companies are certainly free to set their own roles, uh, their private businesses, they can set the policies and uh, it will help some uh, to get started and to continue to exit. So, but from a travel perspective as well, the biggest issue right now is probably, <clears throat> despite a lot of the activity that is going on, there is a little bit of a lack, despite a lot of efforts, there is a little bit of a lack of a co or coordinated approach to policies, um, such as the vaccine passports and how they will be used. And th this will keep it confusing for, for the consumer and to see what the rules are, how everything works in different countries, different destinations, uh, and it might have some impact on, on the travel potential. So, and um, with the vaccines rolling out, uh, the expectation is of course that uh, people get the sense of being able to return to some uh, sort of normalcy or things to the things we uh, we have been doing before. And so over the, the past year, we've heard a lot of talk about uh, pent up travel demand and things like revenge spending and things like that. Uh, but um, for the most part, for most Canadians, it will take uh, some time to feel actually comfortable to do certain things again 
certain uh, certain things. This is very difficult to say with you. Native is not uh, if English is not your native language. Certain things. So, uh, including some of the things people uh, do on trips. Um, you have a few examples here on the slides and on the slide, and I think the numbers speak for for themselves. So we have seen uh, some improvement in the level of comfort. Um, if we look at uh, flying on an airplane, for instance, uh, last year around this time, 22% uh, of Canadians said that they would be comfortable flying on a plane. Uh, now we're sitting at 38%. Uh, uh, so improvement for sure, but it's certainly not happening uh, in leaps and bounds, um, not yet anyways. Um, it's more of a gradual thing. So, and we see it with the other, uh, the other numbers, they're certainly not not um, overly convincing that people will be um, jumping out and, and doing stuff like they used to. It, it will take time. And we have said that before, there will be uh, a lag between uh, lifting restrictions and when people might feel comfortable again to do certain things. So hopefully the, the vaccinations and the vaccine passports in whatever shape or form we might see them uh, will help uh, move things along. And also, so an, another aspect that we have been talking a lot about um, even before the pandemic, uh, when we talk about travel, uh, we need to consider uh, the state of people's finances. So this is actually um, the first part of um, um, uh, our survey results. This is part of the survey we recently did. So many people have been hit hard financially by the pandemic and uh, although there are many support programs in place by governments and private organizations, and there's a lot of help, uh, but we don't really know yet what the long-term financial impacts are of the pandemic. Um, and so it shouldn't really surprise if we see um, some attitudes of caution when it comes to spending, and especially when it comes to uh, discretionary spending, which would include spending on things like travel, um, even though like, Again, there's a lot of talk about revenge spending, and I'm sure it will happen for some people, but uh, it likely may not be a mass occurring. So um, based on the state of their household finances, finances, uh, we currently have slightly more residents in Atlantic Canada who feel now is not a good time to spend money on travel than there are who feel that now is a good time to spend money on travel. And as you can see, residents in the individual provinces feel somewhat different about it. Uh, in PEI, for instance, uh, there's almost half of residents feel that is actually a good time. Whereas in the Brunswick, uh, the number is relatively low with uh, just over a quarter of New Brunswick residents <clears throat> who feel that this is a good time to, uh, to spend money on travel. So uh, this is the first time we asked this type of question in, in our survey uh on any survey work that we have done and it certainly will be an interesting one to to track over time and see how things might change around as we move along and maybe pass the summer and get the vaccinations um, more on the way so it will be interesting to watch so this basically this concludes our look at the current consumer mindset and as i mentioned um, these are a few things to keep in mind uh, as we start talking now about uh, travel and travel intentions. So travel intentions. Let's have a look at um, how the season might shape up over the next few months. Um, so we've already said this is based on our latest uh, travel intention survey that the department uh, did. Um, and as we have pointed out over the past year, Timing of surveys these days is everything, and sometimes you're lucky, and sometimes you're not so lucky. Uh, some of you may remember uh, our winter travel intention survey in Maritimes last November. Uh, we did the survey, and the bubble burst. Uh, so this survey was conducted between April 8th and April 22nd. And so once again, as with the last survey, uh, the hopes of an early Atlantic bubble burst uh, as the announcement was made about the delay of opening the bubble while we were doing our survey. We were right in the middle of it. So I guess we're 
we're two for two, and perhaps we should uh, stop doing survey. <laughs> I don't know. So it's just sometimes the timing is not in your favor. But um, so there's something we need to keep in mind. And uh, the survey was completed before the situation in Nova Scotia uh, became uh, as concerning as it is now. We still have over 1,400 active cases in Nova Scotia as of yesterday. So from a maritime perspective, uh, the results are perhaps um, a little preliminary, um, but again, we were trying to um, protect against something like that happening, like the announcement of the bubble. Uh, and we were very, very careful in how we phrased our questions so that we are able to, uh, uh, to take the responses and be fairly certain um, that uh, the results are still valid uh, under the condition that when and if the bubble, the Atlantic bubble opens, the travel potential that has been built up will actually realize. So again, something to keep in mind. And so when we talk about travel now over the next uh, half hour or so, um, what we are looking at specifically uh, are travel intentions for overnight pleasure trips between May and October. Uh, this year. So that's specifically, so when I say people traveling, travel, travelers, what we're talking about is those people who are planning pleasure, overnight pleasure trips between May and October this year. All right, now let's look at some numbers. And our first number of the day is 51. Uh, so 51% that is. Uh, which is the share of Atlantic Canadians who are planning to take overnight pleasure trips between May and October this year. So 51%, slightly over half of all Atlantic Canadians. So again, this includes uh, residents of PEI, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and Newfoundland and Labrador as a collective. 51%, slightly over half, are planning some travel. And uh, on the other side, side of the scale, we have about 30% of uh, Atlantic Canadians who are not planning at all to take any trips, and uh, about 19% of residents who are still unsure at this point whether they will be traveling or not. So this is one of the things that really we did notice in, in our survey, depending on the question, so there's still uh, some level of uh, uncertainty uh, here, um, whether it's actual trips, whether it's the number of trips, what to do, where to go, um, the level on, of uncertainty is, is a little bit striking uh, from, from that perspective. But it's all things that, uh, for the most part, we can potentially address. And a lot of it is related to the uncertainty around the Atlantic bubble right now. Um, but uh, I, I believe, I'm fairly optimistic that the bubble will happen. Uh, we just have to be a little bit patient uh, uh, for a little bit longer. Uh, so by, by province, uh, PEI residents are the most likely to travel uh, at 59% and New Brunswick uh, are the least likely at 48%, which is in line with the numbers we, we just saw earlier with, with respect to the financial situation uh, about this being a good or bad time uh, to spend money on travel. So this lines up uh, right there. And 55% uh, of Newfoundland Labrador residents are planning to take overnight trips this year. So again, as um, Atlantic Canadians um, collectively, among those who do plan to take trips, 32% uh, are planning uh, trips to Newfoundland Labrador, 74% to the Maritimes, and 22% to destinations uh, outside Atlantic Canada. And so, so the top destinations there outside of Atlantic Canada are uh, Ontario and Alberta, but the numbers are relatively small. Nothing tops 10% uh, or barely 10% uh, and nothing tops 5%. So not much appetite right now to travel outside the reason, region. And the reason why we're seeing uh, the 74% here travel to Maritimes, of course, Maritimes makes up three provinces. And uh, of course, we have the, the majority of residents in, in that area. So that's why we're seeing this high number here. And uh, the next slide will explain why this is. 
So let's take a closer look at uh, travel intentions within Atlantic Canada uh, by province. Uh, so from a provincial perspective, residents of each province are the most likely to travel within their own province, uh, with our own Newfoundland and Labrador residents more likely than anyone else to travel in their home province at 83%. Uh, PI is at the uh, low range of the scale, uh, only, I'm saying only in quotation marks, 60% is still uh, the majority. So PI, like really any residents of Atlantic provinces, certainly very committed to travel uh, within their own province. And um, now, so we don't really have any reference point uh, for comparison. Um, so, but the strong intentions to travel at home within each of the Atlantic provinces could likely be the result still of the uncertainty surrounding the opening of the Atlantic bubble. We know that uh, residents of each of the provinces feel fairly comfortable and safe traveling within their own province and a little bit more uncomfortable to venture out a little bit more outside. So once the bubble opens up, perhaps these number might shift a little bit around, but on the grand scheme of things, I think for me, this is a very optimistic view uh, of the uh, of the season. I think we're going to see a lot of travelers uh, going in and out, hopefully once the, the bubble opens. So, but again, even from our own residents point of view, uh, this is going to be shaping up as a, a busy season. So otherwise, Nova Scotia is uh, the top choice for out of province travel among Atlantic, Atlantic Canadians and Nova Scotians themselves are most likely to travel to PEI outside their own uh, province. Um, and even like when we compare uh, Newfoundland Labrador residents with the Mary Thomas, uh, there doesn't seem to be a hell of a lot of appetite for, for our residents to venture outside uh, their own uh, province, again, possibly as a result of the uncertainty with the, with the bubble. Um, so before we specifically talk about how the travel season might shape up specifically in, in Newfoundland and Labrador, let's take a quick look at the reasons why Atlantic Canadians are not planning to travel. This is always interesting, and especially now from a point of view of uh, gauging the impact the pandemic still has on travel intentions and what role financial reasons and affordability play. Um, which are usually among the top reasons for not traveling. So before the pandemic, financial reasons were always in the uh, e either the top reason or at least within the top three. So always an impact there. But since the pandemic, since the start of the pandemic, uh, reasons related to the pandemic are usually uh, very dominating in uh, turning people away from from travel. So and that was the expectation here, really. Um, that we would see that, but I was, or we were a little bit surprised to see that uh, among maritime residents, so the maritime residents are the orange numbers we're seeing here, that actually affordability was the num number one reason among uh, maritime residents why they're not planning any trips this year, whereas for Newfoundlanders and Labradorians, uh, pandemic related reasons are still the top uh, while they're not planning uh, to travel and really affordability comes in as again only in quotation marks uh, number three and of course there's some some other reasons why people don't travel such as concerns about high gas prices uh, no vacation time or personal reasons um, but these are um, only impacting a relatively small share of Atlantic Canadian residents so they're by no means in the range of the numbers we're seeing on the on this slide here so, so now that we uh, that we have set the stage, um, let's talk about the travel potential uh, to this uh, to this province. Again, you see this a little bit color coded here. There's a theme. Anything orange usually relates to the Maritimes. Uh, green, we're talking about our own uh, Newfoundland Labrador residents. So there's a couple of pie charts here. Uh, let's look about let's talk about the likelihood uh, to travel to uh, uh, to the province 
as you can see, uh, there's about 19% of married homeless who would definitely or very likely travel here. And an additional 14% are somewhat likely. And among Newfoundland Labrador residents, the likelihood of travel in the province is significantly higher. So we've seen a nice 52% here. Um, not really a surprise anymore now that we have seen some numbers before. Um, so the potential looks uh, pretty good with over half of residents, at least very likely uh, to travel here and another 11% that are somewhat likely. Now, this is a, a part I'm not feeling 100% comfortable with, <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, I'm a math person, uh, and most, most of you who know me know that I'm a math person, I love math. So when we do the math, uh, and we're looking at the, the likelihood of residents traveling to the province, we're coming, we're looking at if there are that potential realizes, we could see up to upwards of 200,000 Mary Palmers and uh, even 200,000 of our own residents here. Now this is the potential, it's based on the math from the survey. So we'll, if we could just realize a portion of this total potential, I think we'll, we're, we're in good shape for this season. So as I said, this is, for me, the survey results were optimism, most, for the most part with mixed in with a, certain level of uncertainty, but for the most part, I, I think this looks really good for, for busy for busy season. So, but again, we have to take these with a grain of salt, um, especially in, with the uncertainty around the, uh, uh, the bubble. And as we have seen in February, I think everybody remembers that things can turn uh, just in a, in a flash so quickly, we don't even know what's happening. So, but again, it doesn't happen until it happens. And uh, right now things are looking good. And I would take these numbers as a sign uh, for cautious optimism. Uh, our next topic is uh, the purpose of trips residents are planning. And there, I believe um, we're in for a bit of a surprise, at least I was, I don't know how you guys feel. Um, but um, from our previous non-resident research, we never really identified the Maritimes as a strong vacation market. Um, not certainly not on the level as Ontario or Alberta. Um, we usually, when we look at uh, visitors, all the visitors that we get from the Maritimes, we usually get more business visitors um, or those uh, visiting uh, family and fam family and friends. So this is the the bulk uh, of the visitors that we usually get and. Um, Actually, if you go back to our exit survey results, uh, really only 19% of, um, of married homes used to uh, visit uh, the province for vacation. Uh, so seeing vacation here as the main purpose uh, coming out so strongly uh, does surprise me a little bit. Uh, but again, this is, this is really good news. Um, and uh, uh, it's, it's the same across all three maritime provinces. So um, more than half in each of the province, provinces uh, are planning to come here for vacation. 76% uh, in PEI, 62% uh, from New Brunt, of New Brunswick residents and 52% in Nova Scotia. So this is not a fluke. It's um, across all three maritime provinces that vacation is very a strong driver of uh, travel. So. Again, this is good news because we know vacation visitors usually stay a little longer, spend a little bit more money, um, see more things, take in more stuff. So um, I'm not, uh, uh, I'm actually pleased to see that. So that's great. Um, and and um, now the picture is a little bit different for Newfoundland and Labrador residents, where we are seeing an almost even split among those three uh, major purposes that came out on top of, uh, when we asked about the purpose of travel. Um, but um, if we look at um, vacation and weekend getaways as a form of discretionary travel, um, it is quite positive and encouraging to see that the, these numbers taken together, two thirds of our residents um, are actually likely to travel in the home province uh, by choice. 
so they're selecting to do that so which is again which is great news and we're moving right along this one of my favorite questions um speaking of choice is trying to figure out um why people choose certain uh, destinations over others for their vacation so we all know that a vacation destination is one we do get to select as opposed to when you're on business trips you know somebody tells you to go go to Halifax go to Montreal go to Toronto uh, if you have family you can't really choose where they live if they live in Halifax this is where you go if they live in, in Montreal this is where you go and if they live in Ontario this is where you go but for our actual vacation, we get to select where we go. And it's always uh, interesting to find out what the motivations are um, for selecting one destination over another. So um, in, in this survey, this is um, one of our questions uh, to find out why Mary Thomas and Newfoundland Labrador um, choose Newfoundland as their vacation destination. So what we did a little bit different than in our exit survey, where we kind of asked people to write in uh, why they chose uh, Newfoundland as a Newfoundland Labrador as a vacation destination. In this case, in this survey, to make it um, a little bit more straightforward, um, we provided a list to uh, uh, survey respondents, and we asked them to select up to three reasons from the list because we know we can't narrow it down to one because there's never just one. We've learned that from in how our past survey works. So up to three reasons, uh, respondents could, um, could select from the list. So um, on this slide, what you're looking at are the uh, results uh, for the maritime residents. Again, the orange is the giveaway here. We're talking about maritimes. And as you can see, we do have, um, uh, I guess I can call them genuine um, vacation visitors who want to spend their uh, vacation here and see the, the province's beautiful nature uh, and to go on a bucket list uh, trip. Um, and the reason I'm saying this is like uh, we had the, one of the, the choices for uh, choosing Newfoundland Labrador as a vacation destination was that um, because of the bubble you can you can travel there without restrictions. And uh, uh, not seeing this coming out on top, and also not seeing uh, coming uh, the family ties coming out on top, uh, really uh, tells a story here, saying that um, Mary Thomas are generally interested in in a vacation trip uh, to this province, and that they, uh, you know, want to have these bucket list experiences and uh, see the province that they always wanted to see. So it's. Um, it's quite interesting to see uh, the fair share of vacation travelers. Um, oh, there's one thing. So uh, one of the things I, thing I wanted to highlight is that uh, there's a fair share of uh, vacation travelers who are actually coming back here to uh, see and do things uh, that they missed out on on a previous trip. So we're we'll certainly getting some repeat travelers, which is uh, good news as well, because that means we have done something right and left a good impression with travelers when they were here for their first trip. Now let's move on to our own Newfoundland and Labrador residents. So we asked them basically the, the same question and uh, we changed some of the, the categories uh, for a very specific reason. But uh, so asking the same question and uh, to our residents uh, we find too that uh, the beautiful nature and landscape came uh, out on top as the top reason to vacation in this province and also similar to the maritimes um, seeing and doing things that were missed on a previous trip is a motivation for 30 percent of residents uh, who are likely to take a vacation trip so this is again this is definitely good news um, which also adds to uh, previous survey findings uh, from like building on last summer where we found that Newfoundland Labrador residents would go on another trip in the province based on their past trip experiences. So again, all good news because we know what we're doing something right and first trips or previous trips have less, left an impression and enticed 
uh, residents to to do to travel more in their in their own backyard. So, um, and also the fact that uh, uh, nearly 40% of residents would vacation here to support local businesses and tourism uh, is quite telling in that uh, residents really do understand how important tourism is to this province and that they feel that they can really help the industry repair the damage done uh, by the pandemic by traveling at home. So quite uh, again, good news coming out of um, this question, and we'll actually we'll, um, so it gives us a good um, what what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it's a, it's a real pleasure to see that uh, um, residents are so supportive of the tourism industry and uh, that they do see themselves being able to play a role in in the recovery. So, uh, in the interest of time and uh, getting as much information from the survey to you as we can during this session, um, let's take a quick look at some trip characteristics, uh, such as the number of trips planned, time of travel, trip length, uh, travel parties, etc. So there's a lot of numbers on, on this slide, but it gives you kind of a, uh, a snapshot of what um, a trip, uh, of maritime residents could um, could uh, uh, look like. Um, so we we'll look at the maritimes first again. So the, um, there are a couple of things that are notable. Um, for instance, uh, when it comes to the to the number of trips, um, you see almost half of maritimes plan just one trip, uh, but 34 percent. So there's over 34 percent, fairly high share. I don't know yet uh, how many trips they might take. Again, this could be uh, related to the uncertainty uh, surrounding the Atlantic bubble. It could be a little bit of lack of knowledge or just personal circumstances because we, uh, within this pandemic situation, we never know what the day looks like tomorrow. And uh, interesting to note as well is that uh, among Maritimers who do know how many trips they want to take, the average number is about 1.7. So uh, quite pleased this is more than one trip uh, amongst all these uh, uh, residents. So it bodes well for, for being busy. Uh, what also stands out is uh, uh, the, the timing of travel, not, perhaps not so much the timing itself, um, but the um, the share of maritime residents who want to come here in July and August. So there's a, overwhelmingly uh, July and August are uh, leading the pack in terms of uh, when uh, maritimers want to come here. Um, and you can see September still a pretty good month at 17% and uh, June 12% had planned some, some trips here. Uh, we also had about 10% of maritimers who were planning trips here in May. Uh, which we can be pretty sure are uh, very unlikely to happen. Um, but hopefully some of this potential can be realized later on in the season if, if the bubble uh, does, uh, does open. Um, from a trip length uh, perspective, the most common trip length is uh, four to seven nights, uh, which is uh, very good to see those longer stays, the longer vacation stays. Um, as is noted, uh, some a little bit shorter due to the, uh, um, the getaways some people are looking for. Uh, also, maritimers would most likely travel with a spouse or, or partner, and 13% uh, would travel uh, solo, which is quite an interesting number. Um, and again, another uh, very number that we're pleased to see here is 67% uh, of maritimers are planning to. Uh, stay at a hotel or resort. So we're talking paid accommodations here as opposed to staying with relatives and friends. And as a result, of course, um, the high level of uh, vacation trips uh, uh, Mary Thomas are planning. And so there's a little bit of an indication here that money uh, will be spent. And now let's see how uh, trips might look like. Um, that Newfoundlanders and Labradorians are planning to take in the province. Um, 
what surprises me here is um, uh, the even higher level of uncertainty among residents about the number uh, of trips uh, they might uh, want to take. So it, it's we saw 34% are unsure among the Mary Thomas, 44% of uh, Newfoundland and Labradorians are still unsure about the number of trips they want to take. Um, I'm not sure. Again, it could be the uncertainty of the circumstances. We don't know what one day, uh, what the next day is going to look like. So people holding back a little bit and laying off with the planning and they know they might want to go on a trip and they decide on the fly when they have time, when they when the time is right. And again, very good number to see here uh, among decided uh, residents. Uh, the average number of trips they're planning is 2.9. So um, again, it, it looks like we're going to see a lot of activity. And from a timing perspective, uh, July and August um, uh, look great. Like almost two thirds of uh, residents are planning trips in that time span. And I'm not sure who's on the call uh, here today, but some of uh, the operators may not be surprised by seeing these numbers because they already have uh, perhaps book bookings and uh, you can tell from your bookings how the season might be shaping up. But what is also interesting to note is the, the shoulder months of uh, June and September also look uh, fantastic in terms of uh, planned uh, activity among uh, our own residents. Uh, currently, uh, the majority of Newfoundland Labrador residents are opting for for shorter trips in the province of two to three nights, which is mainly driven by those who are planning uh, a weekend getaway, and while those who are planning vacation trips are kind of equally likely to spend either two or three nights on a trip or four to seven nights during the trip. So, but again, the, the shorter trips prevail a little. A shorter trips more often, I guess, uh, people have different ideas of what they want to do where they want to go so uh, but whatever works whatever gets people on the go uh, works certainly for 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 the for the industry um so and some of you may remember um from our survey our survey about resident travel uh, last summer uh, where a large share of uh, resident residents uh, reported that spending time with the uh, family and friends provided them with some of their most memorable uh, travel experiences. And uh, looking at the likely travel parties this season, uh, it seems that this is what residents have on their minds again for this year. Uh, with nearly a quarter of residents likely to travel with other family members or uh, friends. So this look does look a little different from um, what the maritime uh, residents are planning in terms of uh, travel parties. So uh, again, uh, people will travel around with lots of company and will be looking for those types of experiences that can be enjoyed as a family or as a group. So now, finally, we probably <laughs> we uh, want to answer uh, one of the most burning questions some of you may have. So what would travelers actually be up to when they're traveling? What do they want to, to do and see uh, when they're here? Um, let's take a look at the uh, activities and experiences first. I know this slide looks a little uh, busy with all the numbers. Again, pay attention to the colors, uh, orange for the Maritimes and uh, uh, green for the New uh, Newfoundland Labrador residents. Um, I tried different ways to report this these numbers, but it, having it all here all the numbers in one slide was still the best option and you can really see uh, what sticks out and um, um, what comes out on top of the list here um, so considering what we saw last summer there's perhaps not too many surprises here uh, at least not when it comes to our own residents so that's the green bar uh, hiking and walking certainly uh, tops the list and along with the shopping and camping. Um, and for the most part, you know, really anything outdoors is of interest as well as a few, I call them traditional pastimes of uh, Newfoundlanders and Labradorians like ocean fishing, angling and ATV tour. And so certainly higher interest levels there than what we're seeing among the Maritimes. 
Um, what surprises perhaps a little bit is the interest in, in guided tours, both uh, indoors and outdoors, uh, as well as boat tours among the maritime residents. Um, I guess those were the kind of things that uh, travelers wanted to kind of stay away from last year uh, to avoid crowds. But hopefully this is sort of a sign that uh, travelers are feeling a little bit more comfortable. Um, we're pretty much used to all the uh, uh, health and safety measures that have been put in place. We have a lot of confidence in them. So uh, perhaps, so this is a really good sign uh, that Mary Thomas want to take in these activities. Again, this uh, chance to spend money uh, and a chance to, to take in uh, those uh, bucket list experiences that uh, Mary Thomas is uh, looking for and being in the outdoor, uh, outdoors um, and enjoy some activities uh, in our beautiful landscapes and uh, nature. From a, uh, so in terms of places and attractions, um, potential travelers want to visit. Uh, Newfoundland and Labrador residents' favorites haven't really changed much uh, from last summer. Uh, restaurant, beaches, and trails are uh, on many residents' agenda. Uh, there are also top choices uh, among maritime residents, and also a considerable share of both uh, our residents and maritime uh, would visit national parks, historic sites, nature parks, lighthouses. So generally the interests of both Mary Thomas and our residents uh, appear very similar. Uh, and what, what I find also interesting is that say with 50, 40 to 50 percent or in some instances uh, more than that uh, of both uh, Mary Time and Newfoundland Labrador residents interested in visiting most of these places. Uh, we get a sense that travelers are not just looking to go to one or two places, but that they are likely to visit places and attractions that would provide them with a with varied experiences um, to enjoy a bit of everything, you know, from nature, nature to culture and history to having a little bit of family, family fun. And again, like if we put that in in the context of the number of trips uh, Mary Thomas and our own residents are planning. So there's certainly enough opportunity for, for everyone to fill their days uh, with uh, interesting experiences and be active and enjoy uh, every aspect uh, that our province has to offer. And last but not least, um, here's a, a quick overview of um, of who might uh, vi visit uh, certain regions of the uh, um, of the province, and here uh, we are seeing actually some notable differences between Mary Thomas and our own residents, and this goes back to um, the different purposes we have seen. So Mary Thomas again with the vacation um, and uh, longer stays, whereas Newfoundlanders we have the, the short getaways. Everybody's got their favorite place. So uh, certainly probably not too much of a surprise to see St. John's on, as the top destination among uh, Mary Thomas, whereas uh, the central and the Western regions are the top destination choices among decided uh, Newfoundland and Labrador residents. Um, and I want to stress here, these are decided um, travelers or potential travelers. Um, again, mentioned the uncertainty before, uh, among Mary Thomas, actually, uh, it's interesting to note that 20% of Mary Thomas don't quite know yet uh, which region uh, they might visit. And um, not quite sure. So we can't nail it down to one, one specific reason why there's this uncertainty. Again, it goes back to the uh, Atlantic bubble, very likely. Um, and Mary Thomas might be delaying their, their final planning to when there's more certainty for them. Um, or uh, they may not be familiar enough with the province to be able to decide where exactly they want to go. Again, the planning is not quite final yet. So, but either way, um, it is a good reminder for us uh, that it is always important to ensure the information uh, potential travelers might be looking for is readily available, uh, either 
uh, through the website, social media channels, online travel agency where it's applicable, or even just timely responses to inquiries. So um, you have to keep that in mind. So again, travel planning not quite finished. Um, we had a question there on the path to purchase within the survey. And we do know that Newfoundlanders and Labradorians are much further ahead in terms of planning their trips. Um, then uh, Maritimers are so keep your information ready in case people are looking at looking for it and uh, have to make those final uh, decisions for their trips. So we're almost at the end here. So there's one thing I want to show you, and uh, I'm I'm really proud of this. Um, and my, one of my colleagues, Krista knows what he put that together. Uh, she did the research on that. We dug a little bit deeper um, uh, into the information we got uh, from the uh, from the survey, uh, and uh, using some of the new tools that we have, uh, we put together um, um, a segmentation of potential travelers uh, from the Maritimes to the province. So this, these are. Uh, specific segments that we could identify from the research who are most likely to travel from the Maritimes to, um, to Newfoundland and Labrador. And uh, so these are, um, once you, you can uh, immerse yourself in, in this information, once you get the, uh, uh, the slides, um, this is just uh, again to point out that we have this. Uh, this is more information about our potential visitors uh, to get to know them a little bit better, there's, there's pretty good profile information here in terms of uh, who they are, how they think, and uh, hobbies, and uh, general lifestyle, how they can be reached uh, through um, the, the various communication channels, what they're interested in. So this is really to help you tailor uh, the message to uh, um, who might be coming and who you might want to attract out of these uh, segments. So this is really it's an excellent piece of work. And as I said, we're quite proud of being able to, to do this. And so, and as we're coming to the end uh, of this, uh, of, of our look at the uh, season, how it might be shaping up. So your quick summary, again, um, just to recall uh, a few things. Um, we know the pandemic is still all around us. It's by no means over. It has a lot of impact still on how people feel, what they do, uh, the level of comfort with certain things and activities. Um, but uh, from when we take the, the survey results um, uh, all together, to me, it looks very positive, again, with a grain of uncertainty, but on the grand scheme of things, very positive uh, and very promising, especially for a busy July uh, and August. Um, in terms of you know, what, what people are looking for uh, when they're coming here uh, from a maritime resident perspective, uh, they're looking for these week-long vacation stays, um, try, are here to see nature, perhaps on a bucket list trip. So basically on a grand scheme of things, anything uh, that has worked for our, other, again, in quotation marks, usual vacation visitor will also work uh, for Mary Thomas, all the experiences that we already have, um, activities, a lot of activities that exist, uh, they will work. Um, and very similar for um, our Newfoundland Labrador residents, uh, although they're opting for uh, shorter trips right now, um, they're looking for outdoor experiences um, um, to experience nature and wildlife. Uh, the family experiences. Some of you may recall our session from back in March, and we suggested we were talking about sort of uh, three themes uh, for opportunities. Um, just to recall, um, you know, given given residents a uh, uh, taste of the province in terms of uh, culinary experiences that can happen in, in any setting, in combination with any activity. We were talking about uh, opportunities to experience the uh, province uh, um, in a group with family and friends, as well as providing opportunities for residents to discover any hidden gems. Uh, all this still applies. I think it will be very, uh, will add a lot of value. Creating these opportunities um, to 
will create a lot of value for our residents when they're, when they're traveling here. So this all still works. Um, the, I believe the slides that we presented back then, the opportunities are still uh, on our website. You can go back, go back and check or even connect with uh, John Angelopoulos and our um, um, the tourism uh, product development team to uh, discuss it further if you have uh, any interest in this. So again, um, we talk, just talked about culinary experiences on top of everybody's list, taste of um, the province and going beyond the, the traditional sense of taste uh, will provide certainly uh, valuable experiences for everybody. Hiking and walking is still a strong product that we have to offer. Uh, it, again, it can be done. Um, we have a lot of, lot of trails in the province, excellent destination trails. Um, trails are good <clears throat> excuse me, for a lot of activities. Um, it can involve serious hiking, family fun, things like that. Uh, picnics, chance to discover something new. So again, um, a very good basis uh, to package something up here. Uh, and we mentioned the uh, the guided tours, the high level of interest among Maritimers for guided tours. Again, this is also um, a great opportunity to package things up um, uh, to give Maritimers that bucket list experience and um, you know set them up even for uh, another visit down the road. And uh, just a quick note here, we didn't really uh, touch on that when we. Um, uh, talked about the regions. I, we did look at whether there might be some differences in interest uh, in activities or places to go, depending on what region of the uh, province um, travelers might want to visit. Um, there's not not a lot there that differenti differentiates one from the other. Um, whether people want to visit the, the Avalon Peninsula, the eastern region or western region, uh, level of interest in hiking, for instance, is, is, is equally high. Um, there's small things, but what we did find uh, uh, for Labrador in sp uh, specifically is that uh, those who indicated uh, that they might travel to Labrador, uh, there's certainly a much higher level of interest in, in hunting, angling, and ocean fishing. And we know that uh, Labrador certainly has the the product and the experiences to uh, provide travelers with a special treat. So this is it for me. Uh, um, this is it. Um, again, we will post it on our website. We will have more details available from the survey. And if there's any questions, I think we still have some time to, uh, to answer some. And um, you know where to find us, drop us an email if you have any questions or want to discuss anything further. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen Thank now. you, Michaela. Thank okay. you very much. Very informative. Definitely uh, must see TV for those that are planning for this summer. And those trends, those, all those individual elements really come together, shows what the trends are going to be for the summer. So as Michaela said, I'm going to open the floor for anyone that wants to ask questions. There's a question and answer tab there in the chat tab. If you want to do that, or if you want to, under the reactions tab, just raise your hand virtually and I can get to you that way. So if anyone has any questions there, uh, as of right now, oh, okay, someone just says, uh, Newfoundland Labrador has a marketing campaign currently ongoing in the Maritimes tar targeting these potential visitors, all in preparation of the Atlantic bubble. We are focusing on marketing from the inside out as travel restrictions lift. So that's obviously from the, uh, the department and most likely from the marketing section of the department there. So, anyone have any questions besides telling Michaela what a great job she did? Thank you, Brian. And it was very, very informative. I know it's a lot. I know the research presentation, there's always so much to, to get your head around you, and you, you have smoke coming out of your ears at the end. You're trying to, to figure out what was being said, but that's really <laughs> solid. Like, well, that's really good stuff. Yeah, I know. And obviously, much appreciated that you would uh, do this again for some Kayla. It's a few times you've done this. But as I said, all those individual elements, when you coordinate them, bring them all together, they give us a really valuable picture of what the trend is going to be like for 2021. So I'm going to throw it one more time, or maybe for the third and final time. If there's no questions, is there any questions? Katie 
Okay, what's Katie's asking here? In terms of using, using these statistics for the purpose of developing segmented email marketing lists, what kind of emailing lists would you recommend to a tour company developing for the upcoming season? That almost ties into uh, a workshop we did last week too, Katie. So do you have any, uh, any insight for that, Michaela? What type of email list? My God, this is a little, um, uh, I, yeah. So it's the purpose. Um, of the <laughs> I'm not really sure how to answer this. Yes. I think I have to confer with my colleague from the, the marketing, colleagues from the marketing department. Um, yeah, no, I, this will probably, um, Katie, if you could email us uh, that question, we'll certainly look into that and uh, provide some advice. I don't think I can answer this properly on the spot right now. That's fair. And Katie, case it's sure, she'll do that. She'll reach out to you, Michaela. And yep. as has been said a couple of times, we'll have this posted um, and the session has been recorded. And uh, as Michaela said, the department posted as well. All right, yep. guys. Well, I'm gonna let, let y'all go. Thank you very, very much. Remember there is a, this is Tourism Awareness Month and there's a whole bunch of things that are happening and going on this month. So go to the HNL website to uh, stay involved and take part in really informative sessions like Michaela has given us here today. There's a whole bunch more from various topics from marketing to a variety of other things. So uh, make sure you go to the HNL website and have a look to see what other opportunities there are for Tourism Awareness Month that you could participate in and take advantage of. So Michaela, thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Thanks for everyone else for joining and all the best. Enjoy the rest uh, of your day. Cheers, guys. Thank you. See ya. Bye-bye.